This video is about the venerable Texas Instruments TI-30 calculator. Now, Texas Instruments has produced a long line of calculators that, that start with TI-30. This is their economy class scientific calculator, but this is the first in the line. This calculator came out in 1976. And what's special about it is it represented an enormous price break from earlier calculators. This calculator came to market at $25. In 2019, money would be $113. So that put scientific calculators within reach of pretty much everybody. Now, I just happened to stumble across uh, a couple of these. Somebody was on Craigslist was selling a box of old calculators. And in that box of calculators, he had not one, but four calculators. Now they're not in great shape. I would like to get all of them running. They haven't been turned on in many years, I'm sure. In addition to the calculators, a little treasure trove includes three power supply bricks and three holsters. I mean, if you were a true geek, you had one of these attached to your belt. You know, you walked around like a gunslinger. You're a calculator slinger, true nerd, and even a manual. So now back to our calculators. Let's see what we got. We'll look, we'll look at the back of our calculators. Now, normally they have this little battery cover on the back. This one's missing it, and you can see all damage from leakage in there. Now, this is the connector to the battery, 9-volt battery. And we open up the backs of the others. Again, we have our 9 volt type battery connector. And we have this back, which is designed to be able to hold a 9 volt battery. It just kind of fits right in there like that. Now, in this one, we actually have the original rechargeable battery pack. This battery pack contains two AA nickel cadmium batteries and a, and a small circuit board. And those two little pins there, that's where, they're, that's where the uh, charger plugs in. Calculator can run either on a standard 9 volt battery or this rechargeable battery pack. I have gone ahead and plugged this 9 volt battery into all three of them. It comes to life. Now, some of these keys are really stiff. Some of these keys are not really responding very well. The 9 key is not working. The 6 key is not working. On calculator number 2, I've plugged in the battery pack and I've tested all the keys, and all the keys work on this one. 9 volt battery into calculator number three, and all the keys work except key number nine. Now, in calculator number four, you can see that the battery terminal is se severely corroded. One of the uh, terminals is completely absent, so I can't immediately test it with a battery. I'll have to do some repairs. See, this is a good place to start. A lot of battery leakage. Opening up this calculator is a little unusual. What we have here are these three big plastic clips here here and here and they're hooked under these two teeth here so it's like one big tooth here and then two small tooth here and you have to kind of pry them apart in order to get the front and the back apart so i've got this first tooth already pried apart and that's giving me a slight opening here now now if i can get the next one Okay, I got all three of those sets of teeth pried apart, and we are part way open. Something's still holding us down here on this lower edge, and that should probably catch whatever's holding it. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, so we have three more sets of clips. Okay, so now we've got it open. Immediately we can see where this battery cable connects just to two points right there and we should be able to replace this it appears that this is all essentially one unit that's held on by one two three four five six clips we'll see what happens here okay i've carefully pried up all of these various clips right here and i sort of got this thing loose oh my goodness look at that look at all that battery leakage here the greenish color suggests that it's potassium 
hydroxide, so probably alkaline batteries or nickel cadmium batteries. Just one thing to take note of when you do remove this circuit board from the front cover, just remember not to flip this thing over. Right underneath this styrofoam is where all the keys live. If you flip this thing over, all of these keys are going to come spilling out. So once you pull the circuit board out of here, just keep this thing facing downward all the time. One of the reasons that Texas Instruments was able to achieve the price breakthrough that they did was they reduced the entire calculator essentially to a single chip. Prior to that, this, this board here would have been covered with uh, components. Here's the cable that the battery plugs into. But uh, as you can see, this thing is badly corroded and one of them is completely missing. So in order to get this thing working, we're just going to have to replace this connector here. Now fortunately, replacements are available. I have one right here. In fact, I bought a whole bag full of them here from a supplier in China. I didn't pay very much for these at all. We'll start by desoldering the old connector. Get that out of there. Now we have our new connector. I've cut the new one to match the size of the old one. And we'll go ahead and solder that in. Okay, we've got that new connector soldered in. We can hook up our battery. Okay, the battery is now hooked up. And let's test it out. Aha, uh -huh, it's working. Okay, so we've fixed the problem of the corroded battery terminal. Now we have to do something about all of this corrosion here, all of this battery spill. Now these, these are completely solid. You can't, you can't depress these keys at all. There's just so much material in here. I have gone ahead and tested all the keys and they all work except for, for these ones with all of this blue material. Also this key here, which is the tangent key. I'm not sure how we're going to get this battery leakage out of here. These keys are covered with a thin plastic sheet. Now you can see on the back there are little holes here. That's probably where the battery material came through, these little holes here. I'm probably going to have to tear off some of this plastic in order to expose these keys. I've taken a very sharp scalpel blade and I've sort of cut the plastic right along this line here. I'm going to see if I can't peel this back without doing too much damage. And well, it doesn't look like there's any way to repair this thing. This is pretty hopeless here. There's a little piece of uh, contact right there. It's just completely eaten away. It's just this greenish material. There's really no structural metal there left at all. Okay, I don't really see there's any way to repair this. This set of buttons is really kind of a matrix. When you press these buttons, what you do is you short one of these lines together. We've got five columns and eight rows. Now these lines here, these are, these are the columns. They run right down the middle of these buttons. One, two, three, four, and five. And then the rows are these pairs of lines, two, four, six, eight. So when you depress one of these keys, this metal disc comes in contact with the line that runs right behind it. Now, each one of these rows is a solid piece of metal. All of these connect to each other elect electrically. And then right here, there's a little piece of metal right here. Kind of hard to see, but right there, little piece of metal. And that's what connects this row to this line. So when, say, I press this button here, it should connect this line across that bar there to that line. Go ahead and do that now. And there it is. And that's how this thing basically works. Unfortunately, this bar here has been destroyed by this potassium hydroxide. So has this one here. I have no idea how to fix that. Certainly that item is never going to be available anywhere. This uh, battery leakage material could have been here for decades. These calculators went into production in 1976. This video is made in 2019. So this could be as much as 43 years old. And this battery leakage material could have been here for decades. Who knows? Just eating away at this copper. 
Okay, so if there's a lesson to be learned from this, don't leave batteries in electronics. It's just going to sit there in a drawer for months or years. Okay, let's go back and look at the other three calculators. Uh, this one here had no problems at all. All the keys work normally, so we'll put that one aside. Now, of these two, there were several keys that had problems. Some that weren't working, some that were stiff and frozen. I'm going to take these two apart, and I'm going to look inside to see if we can figure out what the problem is. Okay, I've got the first of these two calculators apart, and I've got this board loose. Now, with this board in hand, this one, it isn't transparent plastic, it's opaque plastic, but I have no trouble pressing all of the buttons here. All of the buttons seem to feel normal. No evidence of battery spill. The problem appears to be here in the buttons themselves. There's a sheet of styrofoam here covering these buttons. I think what's happened is just material has, has worked its way in to these buttons. Here's the tangent key. This is one that really had, we had some trouble. This one was very stiff. There's this material around the edge of that key. I think that's what's making it so stiff. I think I'm going to have to just pull all the keys out of here. I'm just going to have to just sort of wash them off and wash off the openings. The holes that these keys come through, I just think grease and dirt has built up in here. I think that's a lot of the problem. And I'll bet those keys will move a lot more smoothly when I'm done washing all that off. There's a lot of this greasy material in these, uh, a lot of these holes. I think I just kind of need to sort of slowly kind of clean it all out of there. I've just spent about half an hour cleaning these keys. Many of these keys had this thick, very tenacious material deposited around the edges of the key. Possibly this is just grease from the previous owner's fingers. Mostly I scraped the material off with my fingernails. We'll see how we do. Those keys all feel a lot better now. Okay, we've got two of our calculators working normally. Let's see if we can fix this one. This one also has a number of, of keys that, that, that nine key is very stiff. The minus key is very stiff. Okay, now in this calculator we can clearly see that there has there's a bluish material. There has been some battery leakage in here. Our styrofoam is basically turned to powder. So this has undergone some sort of chemical reaction. I guess I'm going to start by just washing everything and get all of this material off of here. There is lots of corrosion underneath this black material. You can just see it all over those keys. Particularly in this area here, it looks like there's a lot of battery material that got in there. You can see a lot of that blue material in those two holes there. It looks like it leaked in here and it looks like it sort of got all over the place. These are the two circuit boards that had the battery leakage. This one is transparent, so I can see it. This one isn't, so I had to kind of peel it back. Boy, look at all that. In this calculator, the spill appears to involve the lower five rows, and this one involves the upper four rows. I wonder if it's possible whether I could somehow transplant some of these over to here or some of these over to here and make one good one out of two bad ones. I've cleaned these up as best I could. This row, this row, and this row appear to be too damaged to be reused. This row might be reused, and this row might be reused. And I'm wondering if I can't maybe cut these off and transplant them over to here. Now, the way this thing works, we've got these little solder points. I, I had to break these solder points in order to lift this up. We have these, we have these lines that run up to the circuit board. And they connect to these horizontal rows with these solder points right here. It appears that they laid one on top of the other and then soldered them together. I wonder if we'll be able to do that. I doubt it, but we could try. I mean, what is there to lose? Obviously, this thing is, these two calculators are of no value at this point unless I figure out some way to, to get them working. I've gone ahead and cut this part off of the one and 
cut this part off of the other. Above this point, I think they're good. If I can get four rows out of here and put them in here, maybe I could make one working keyboard. The problem is going to be these points right here. This, these appear to be spot welded. These rows of connectors are spot welded here, 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 and here. I'm guessing they had some special machine which probably spot welded them all at once, basically melting copper to copper. Now, obviously, I don't have that kind of a tool. I'm going to have to somehow try to solder them together. I've broken pretty much every solder connection in here. Okay, well, that'll be what we'll have to do. I'm going to have to see if I can salvage some of these rows, transplant them to here, and see if I can't somehow solder them back into place and make a working keyboard out of it. Okay, I have completed the job. It, it took me quite a while and a couple of retries. I ended up taking that square of buttons and ending up cutting it into separate strips and then soldering them in one by one. Basically, I would put solder on both sides and then I would then I would hit it with a soldering iron from the outside going right through the plastic. Anyway, after a couple of tries, it seems to have worked. You know, I've got all the functions working now. I'm going to put this thing back together again. I shall also cannibalize the styrofoam pad from the one in which I cannibalized the keypad. I put this third calculator back together again completely and test out all the functions and everything works normally. Now all of these calculators have a little bit of button bounce. You know, sometimes you'll hit a button and it'll it'll uh, double key, triple key, or not key at all. I think that's probably just oxidation over the over the years. So I purchased a box containing four Texas Instruments TI-30 calculators. One of them worked perfectly immediately. One of them, many of the buttons were stuck and frozen and weren't working. This one was, was fixed with a good cleaning with all, of all of the buttons. And then two of the calculators had battery spill, and both of them were not working. And I was able to make one good one from parts from one of the bad ones. So I sacrificed one calculator to get the other one working. So now we ended up with three working calculators. Was it worth it? Probably not. I mean, it is as, li as little as these calculators are worth, this literally took me a couple hours of work. So was it worth it? No, it probably wasn't, but still. So I end up with three working TI-30 calculators.